So how do you record an electric guitar amplifier? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jace Allen here. So I had a very bizarre thing happen as I was preparing to do this video. Uh, I have been struggling to get decent sound out of an amplifier when I record it into a DAW. So I always used uh, plugins because every time I would record uh, an amplifier, it would just sound muddy, like it just didn't have a good tone to it at all. And that's been consistent throughout, you know, I've, I've used high-end amps. I had a Fender Supersonic 22, uh, which is a tube amp. It's, it's like a $1,600 amp. Actually got it in trade. Uh, and that amp, uh, I think it's a 12-inch speaker. It had a Celestion Vintage 30 in it, which is what my cabinet has. And uh, it, it, I just couldn't get a decent tone on it. I've had all kinds of amps. I had that little Spark 40. I had a Fender Mustang with all the digital stuff in it. I had a, a Line 6 Catalyst, and that was a big amp. I don't know if that was two speakers or not. Um, what else have I had? I don't know. I've just had quite a bit of different... Oh, a little Vox tube amp that basically you would... I think it was like a 2 watt or a 5 watt or something. And, I mean, it didn't have distortion on it, but as soon as you crank the volume all the way up, it would break up. It had a really nice tone to it. 8-inch speaker, but I couldn't get any decent recordings out of that either. So I'd always use plugins, amp model plugins. And every time I do a guitar demonstration, I use the amp plugins. And one thing I notice about people's comments is they comment negatively about plugins because it doesn't represent the real sound of the guitar, but whatever. So I decided I want to do a comparison between three uh, different guitars and I want, you know, I want to capture the sound and see if there's any major differences between, between the tone and the guitars. And so I wanted to use a real amp. So this morning I came down to the studio, set everything up, did some test recordings and, you know, lo and behold, it sounded the way it always does, real muddy. I started out, I have a Fender Super Champ XD, which has got a 10 inch speaker in it. Uh, put the microphone up, and I'm using SM57 microphones. Uh, set the microphone up to it, and uh, it sounded really muddy. So I unplugged it, because you can unplug the speaker from the amp in this particular uh, amp. And so then I've got this uh, Celestion, uh, this is the mono price uh, speaker cabinets with a Celestion Vintage 30 in it. Plugged it into that, set the microphone up, still get that muddy sound. And when I first started recording amplifiers, I would just use a regular vocal mic, whatever vocal mic I had. I had some cheap vocal mics, and then I would use some of the condenser mics I had, and I would pair them up and try to arrange things and move things and, and do all this stuff, and it would always sound terrible. So everybody swears on the SM57, so, so I bought a cheap uh, imitation. This is GLS Audio. These are available on Amazon. I think these are only like 20 bucks or something. And so I used one of these and same results. It was really muddy and everything. So I thought, okay, well, it's got to be the microphone. So I went out and did it. I bought actual SM57. Okay. The industry standard of, of recording guitar amplifiers. So I, like I said, it came down here this morning set everything up, recorded the first amp, or the first speaker, the 10-inch speaker, sounded muddy, set it up on the, on the second, and I'm, and I'm pointing right directly at the uh, dome of the cone. It's because I want that brighter tone. It's supposedly, if you point it right in the center, you get a bright tone, and the farther you move it out towards the edge, the more dark tones you get. And every tutorial I've ever seen, they'll have that microphone set right up, sometimes right up against the fabric of the speaker. So I did that on both of these and it still sounded muddy. So I did. I decided to start moving it back and I actually took tape measure and measured, moved it back and it sounded better almost the farther I got away. But of course you had to increase the gain to, to uh, make up for the, for the distance. And the audio examples were, were awesome. They were, you could almost hear it get brighter the farther away the mic got. And then I set up a condenser mic uh, off to the side and had that spaced out a little ways, recorded that, added some room reverb. So I got it to sound on the recording almost exactly the way I hear the amp in the room. 
So I'm like, okay, I got, I got everything set up, so I'm gonna do this video comparison. So I took off, went out for lunch, did some errands, came back, got everything set up, hit roll camera, started to do my tests. None of them sounded any different. <laughs> so even the ones where the speaker was right up against the fabric, and I'm like, what is going on? What is going on? And I even went back and listened to the original uh, recordings that I did this morning, and I swear it sounded like muddy with a microphone right up against the fabric. And then the farther I pulled away from it, it sounded better. And so when I recorded just, just a little bit ago, I, was, I started to sit down to record this video because I was going to do this explanation of how to record and get a good tone. And if you're having muddy tone, this is maybe why. And then now everything, nothing it sounds the way it did. <laughs> so so when we, we've had all these discussions the past week about tone, and some people had mentioned ear fatigue, and I wonder if that's what's going on. So I guess I don't know what to do other than to set it up, do it the way I did this morning, let you listen to the different examples, and see if you think that the microphone up against the fabric is duller than with the microphone further out because I was sat down to do it and I'm like, well, it doesn't sound any different. So like my whole concept for this video was shot. And, it, and so I'm like, all right, I'll just switch gears and I'll just do it anyway. And I'll let you guys decide if you think it sounds any different. And then maybe if you're having the same problem where you get a muddy tone, because somebody on another video said that the SM57 has real bad proximity effect, which means the closer you get to the microphone, the the dark, you know, the the more low tones you get. And I'm wondering if that's what's going on here. But why I can't hear it now this afternoon when I could hear it this morning, I don't know. So let's get to the example and we'll just let the jury decide. So let's go. Okay, so I've got everything all set up and ready to go. Let me uh, give you a quick look at the setup here. So there's the Superchamp XD Fender. Uh, it's a 10-inch speaker. Uh, I believe it's one of Fender's own speakers. Uh, it's a tube, sort of, I guess you could call a hybrid. It's got some digital effects in it, but it's, it's a tube amp. Uh, it sounds really nice. Uh, it's got, a, like I said, 10 inch speaker. Uh, the neat thing about it is you can plug it right into, you can pull the speaker cable out and run a, you know, a new speaker output into a cabinet, which is what I've done here. So I've got this, this is the mono price uh, Celestion with the vintage 30s in it. And it's just a cabinet, and I got it plugged into this amplifier. And the, re the only reason I did that is because this morning when I was trying to mic this up and make it sound good, to me this didn't sound great. And so everybody says, oh, well, if you want to change the sound of your guitar, change your speaker in your amp. So that's what I've done here. So, and that should be a good speaker, right? It's a vintage 30, so that's, you know, everybody talks about how good those are. So this is uh, the microphone, um, just a, like I said, SM57. And uh, I've got the condenser mic uh, next to it, but we'll start out with just the 57 so we can actually kind of move this out of the way. And we're gonna start out right directly in front of that right touching that uh, fabric. You can see the edges of the thing here. You can kind of see the circle. So I'm basically right in the right dead center and up and down too, I should be. Okay, so we're gonna give that a try and uh, see how it sounds. All right, so we have a reaper session going 
This is the audio interface. This is a PreSonus Studio 1824C. And what we have here is the Firefly FFST Stratocaster style guitar. We're using the humbuckers, tone, volume, knobs are all maxed. And here we go. Let's see what we get. <laughs> our first sample and now we're going to take tape measure and measure out two inches same chords okay and we'll come out three inches time we'll do five inches out just for fun Okay, so here's where we play it back and we'll see if you think it sounds different. So obviously we're losing some volume because of the, you know, the mic is getting farther away. I think it gets brighter as you go out and I think the the built-in uh, reverb sounds, you can sa hear it more as it gets farther away. Um, that's why in my test this morning, I added the room reverb with the plug-in because I wasn't hearing that reverb and I didn't have the mic quite so far away. so. So what do you think? Can you hear a difference? Is the example with the mic right up against the screen like muddier or lower tone than the one farther away? I think I'm leaning towards the two inch away or three inch away. Uh, I guess it depends on if I want the reverb to be in there or not. All right, so there you go. That's uh, single microphone. Uh, center of the cone I guess you call it and uh, I think that sounds pretty nice um, if you want me to I can show you an example of the microphone off axis they call it where it's where it's off to the side so we'll do that real quick just just for the sake of argument so it's right sort of on the edge and we're probably a couple inches away a couple inches away and this is where the effect of the lower tone will be more dramatic. Okay, let's listen to that one. That's definitely lower tone. Let's move it off to the side, but put it right up to the... right up to the fabric of the speaker and it's almost right to the edge of the of the uh, speaker so let's have a listen to that So 
way darker tone. All right, so what I'm going to do now, and that is to uh, have the SM57 right in the middle, a couple inches away, have the dyna or the condenser mic off to the side, maybe three or four inches away, so we can get some of the room ambience, and then record it that way, and then I'll show you how I add the reverb and, and get a really nice sound and I think it represents the sound that I'm hearing in this room, so. Okay, we got that where we want it. Pull that out to two, I'll go two and a half. right in the center and then we're going to take our condenser mic and we'll just put that there's the side of the and we'll put that out probably right about there so the condenser mic is about five inches away so we can pick up some of the room ambience the sm57 is two and a half inches away and then the uh, Condenser mic is kind of off to the very edge, but kind of pointed, angled towards, not exactly centered, but angled towards the, the middle of the ring, I guess you could call it. So, there you go. And let's see. Play, play the same thing again. Okay, we'll listen to that. All right, there you go. That that sounds pretty good, I think. Uh, I think, to me, that sounds pretty close to what the amp sounds like in this room. So there you go. I hope this was somewhat helpful and informative. Uh, I certainly learned a lot. Um, just kind of experimenting. That's sometimes uh, what it takes to uh, get the tone you want. You can't always watch a YouTube video and go, okay, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Uh, I've learned that with trying to mic drums too. I've, I've watched YouTube videos and set it up just exactly, you know, attention to detail, exactly the way they show how to set it up. And I, you know, some, I can't get the tone that that they get out of it so uh, and I don't know why so it it pays to do some of your own experimentation um, so I'm interested to see what you guys think about the tones you know does the mic right up against the uh, speaker fabric uh, sound worse than it farther away and obviously this isn't in a mix or anything either I think the brighter guitar tones would sound better in a mix. Again, I hope you found this uh, interesting. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time here on Jace Allen Guitar.